I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 5th of October, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today I'm going to be answering a viewer question. I have a very short time to do today's episode. I'm recording it in my office at night. I had zero time to do any of the recording during the day, so we're going straight to a viewer question. And that question is, where can I find a cheap apartment in a safe city in Nicaragua? So we're going to get to that, of course, right after the bump. So Michael asks, what is a safe city with cheap rents in Nicaragua? It's actually a pretty tough one to answer because the, the quick and dirty answer is that all cities in Nicaragua are safe. Nicaragua is a very safe country, just in general. You have to take it from a starting point. This is, this is a safe country and you don't have to spend a lot of time worrying about where you're gonna find a safe place to be. You really can go anywhere and have safe options. That said, there are a few places that are of course going to be less safe and likewise there's going to be some places that are less affordable than others. So let's dive into that a little bit because this is good information for everyone. There's a number of cities here in Nicaragua but let's start with there's only one really large city and there's only a handful of mid-range cities. Most of the cities in Nicaragua are going to be pretty small. We don't need to talk about those because they're numerous and your experiences there are going to be extremely unique. But for larger cities, we first of all, we just start with Managua. That is the largest city by far, 1.3 million people. The next largest city is Leon at 0.3. So the difference is an entire million people. It is enormous compared to anywhere else, but don't let that scare you off. 1.3 million is not that large of a city and Managua, specifically for large cities, has an extreme sprawling village feel to it. So. Even for, for people who really don't like city living, Managua may not feel like a city for you. Don't necessarily rule it out just because you don't think you like cities. You might like it. You, a lot of people don't, right? Managua is an acquired taste, I think. It's a nice city and I enjoy going there. My children really enjoy Managua to a point where I would be actually quite surprised if my kids didn't move to Managua at some point. They like Nicaragua a lot but they prefer Managua with its high-rise apartments, its fancy living options, its wide variety of restaurants and shopping. They don't like to go out a lot, but when they do, they like going to Managua. They like the food there much better than here in Leon, and they like the variety dramatically more, and they like how easy it is to get to other things. And while my oldest doesn't particularly like cities, my youngest loves them, and so, there's a pretty good chance, I think, that that's where they're going to end up having spent time here. And I think that tends to be the story of Managua. There's some people who move directly here and only look at Managua. I'm always surprised by that because it goes so against the standard, but it is the capital, it is the largest city. So if you're doing research from abroad and never looking to see what other people do, it's actually pretty easy to say, well, what would you look at other than Managua? Because it seems so obvious at first, it's the only city you hear about when, until you start doing tourism research. But once you start looking at things from a tourist perspective, you realize that everybody says, no, just skip Managua, go directly to Granada and Leon, San Juan del Sur and Ometepe and overlook the rest. Managua immediately gets written off. It's the place of the airport, but you just drive away from it. But Managua is actually a decently safe city. It is by far the most dangerous place within Nicaragua. But remember, Nicaragua is not dangerous. Managua shouldn't be avoided based on danger. If you absolutely prioritize safety above all other things, which people will say, but it doesn't actually make as much sense as it sounds, then Managua will not be your first choice. And if your goal is to have a city where you can walk anywhere, anytime, just head out the door, not think twice, walk middle of the night, just whatever, Managua is not the city for you, nor is Granada. But those are standout, not quite ridiculously safe cities. Most of Nicaragua, you could actually do that. Just walk anywhere and be reasonably safe, even in the middle of the night with no thinking, even if you went into the wrong neighborhood. Certainly here in Leon, I feel very comfortable doing those things. I don't recommend that you do, but if you did it, the chances are you'd be very safe. So. Those, the, Managua especially, 
it has this strong consideration simply because it's the capital and it's a giant city. If you want a larger city with a lot of resources, Managua is realistically your only choice. So just, just remember, it, it, it turns out that way. Like you just don't have choices. Now, Managua is not the cheapest of the cities. It falls on the expensive side, again, for Nicaragua. So it's the least safe, the least affordable, but it's still quite affordable and quite safe. So even as the worst choice in the specific ways that Michael was asking, it's not necessarily something you need to rule out. You can still consider it. And certainly because it's so large, you can shop around in Managua and potentially find very reasonable deals uh, on apartments. For example, I know that there's a high rise with what are supposed, I've never been in it, but I've been told is quite nice apartments and they started only $350 a month. Now, if you're coming to Nicaragua from somewhere else, that sounds really cheap. If you're a Nicaraguan, you say, that, yeah, of course it does. That's expensive. It's an expensive place. Three fifty dollars doesn't really sound like an expensive apartment, but here in Leon, for example, and of course that's unfurnished, that's on a long-term lease, right? All those kinds of things. Similarly, getting a two-bedroom, very nice, uh, well, reasonably nice in a, in a good neighborhood, desirable neighborhood here in Leon for something like that, right? Two-bedroom, one-bath, good amount of space, outdoor spaces, not in a high rise because we don't do that here, could be under $200, almost half what you're paying in, in Managua. So that's important to really have that context that you may be paying double, but you're gonna get a lot more for it or you're gonna be getting very specific things for it, such as being able to be farther off the ground or being able to walk to lots of restaurants or shopping. Oh, did you make yourself a bad little girl? <clears throat> Beyond Managua, you have a number of other cities. Nicaragua really does give you a lot of choice. That was my dog. Uh, Nicaragua really does give you a lot of choices. Granada is going to be one of the most popular places that people pick. However, for these specific requirements, it's probably your last choice. It has, it's a, it's a relatively small city uh, and it has a lot of expats and it is the tourist center of the country. Because of that, both crime is higher than a city of its size should have. It's not Managua high, but it is far higher than an Esteli or a Chinandega or a Rivas, right? And the rents are quite a bit more expensive. It's a desirable city, both for Nicaraguans because they want to be near where the tourists are. Uh, maybe not all Nicaraguans, ones, but enough to raise the cost there. And many expats uh, and foreigners want to live and or rent there. And if you're going to own and rent out on a short term, like an Airbnb, it's the most popular place to do that. So those are all things you really have to think about when you are considering Granada in general. And so if you're looking for affordable and safe, Granada kind of falls into the, this is the worst of the options. So probably you want to rule it out and that's fine. Uh, we've got lots of other things to choose from. You also have in that general area, Messiah, which, sit, which sits between Granada and Managua. And honestly, it's gonna have a lot of the same factors. It's probably going to be a little bit more affordable if you can find the spots. You don't have nearly as many tourists, but it's a desirable area. It's basically part of the metropolitan greater Managua Granada mixed area. Uh, and so it's, it's again, it, definitely an option. You can definitely consider it. And I don't know the prices as well. I do know it has some crime problems. It is one of the few places where we have had friends in the last several weeks who've actually been assaulted there, um, which sounds terrible, right? Like we say how safe Nicaragua is. It really is. He was very foolish, bad part of town, late at night, coming out of a, a, a place that was mistaken for someone specific, we think. And you know, he's fine. He didn't even get anything stolen from him, but some guys did chase him, right? Like it was, it was not a great scene. Um, and Messiah does have a little bit of a reputation, um, but it's not, it's not bad. Right. Um, and, and like, no matter where you go, someone is going to have something happen to them. And we know a lot of people here, right? So our, uh, our view into when crime happens is a bit different than most people in most places, right? We know lots and lots of people. We talk to tons of people. And so we tend to interact with whatever's going to happen and quite a bit more. And it's worth noting, it was not, it was not a tourist. It was not an expat. It was a Nicaraguense um, who, who had an incident there, but, and, and should have known better, right? Not that you should ever need to know better, right? That there's never an excuse for bad things like that to happen, but 
we all know, like, if you go into a bad part of town in the middle of the night, you're not paying attention, you're putting yourself in danger there, you know when you're doing things that are reckless and that uh, you take some risks. And no one pulled a weapon, nothing like that, right? Um, but uh, uh, it, bad things can happen. So that whole Managua to Granada stretch with Messiah in the middle falls into kind of a greater capital area, and that area brings a little bit higher cost, a great deal of convenience uh, in the way that here in Leon we say, oh, we want to run out to the beach to maybe go to a different restaurant or vice versa. We live at the beach, you want to come into the city to go to a nice restaurant. For those who watch my, my channel, you know that we do this all the time. We talk about this a lot. Out there, you could say things like, I'm, I live in Messiah, but I'm going to run to Granada for dinner, right? You have, it's so close that you can easily do those things. Um, and, and the same, like if you live in Granada, it's a little bit longer, but if you want to go all the way into Managua to go shopping or all the way into Managua to go to dinner, while it might be an, an annoying drive to do for dinner, it is absolutely reasonable to do so, at least as a special occasion. So that area, just consider that more or less one giant area with a lot of shared uh, uh, determining factors for you. So. I think those are the cities that least fit the bill. So let's talk about the options that really do. Let's start in the south with Rivas. Rivas is the capital of the southernmost province here in western Nicaragua. We're only going to talk about the west. The east doesn't really fit into the same category. Its cities are very small. They wouldn't really be what people would consider as cities. They are very affordable. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, everyone always talks about them being very cheap. They also have a tendency towards being a little bit more dangerous. Again, not super dangerous, but more so than other places in the country. And you just it's not what people are, are thinking of when they're talking about Nicaragua. I know a lot of people are like, well, I'm really interested in the Caribbean coast, and I am too. I really want to go out there and spend some time, and I have some plans to do that, hopefully sometime in the reasonable near future. But it's not something that it, once we go out and show it to you, it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be a great show, but it's not going to be the thing that fits the bill. When you're looking at Nicaragua, that's not what you're looking for, right? It's a different experience. So we just need to be aware of that. Rivas is a major city, but it is a small to medium sized city. It's the capital of the Southern Departamento. It is the capital of the region that includes the famous San Juan del Sur and most of the beaches that people tend to know when they're coming from abroad. If you live here, you think of the Northern beaches most of the time, but if if you are a tourist, you tend to think of the southern beaches, uh, Tola and uh, uh, Popoyo and San Juan del Sur, of course, and countless others. There's a lot of beaches down in Rivas. They're all in Rivas. That's where they are. So that city is, uh, while it's connected to all that, and it's a big part of the tourist zone, it itself is not touristy. It really has very little infrastructure. So it's uh, actually a relatively quiet Nicaraguan city. Uh, it does have a little bit of nightlife driven by the tourist and the industry because of the tourist. So that makes it a little bit more interesting. It has a little bit more restaurants. It has the Pan American Highway goes right through the middle of it. Uh, so that it's got a great location. And its eastern suburb is San Jorge, which is the port where you get the ferry going to the island of Ometepe, which of course is really interesting. And that there's a waterfront in Rio Rivas on one side at San Jorge, which is really, I mean, if you really felt like it, you could walk from Rivas to San Jorge. We're not talking about a real distance here. And Rivas is then close to many beaches. San Juan del Sur is actually one of the farthest beaches from Rivas, not one of the closest. So it, the city actually has a lot of really cool stuff nearby. It's a relatively unpopulated area and it's a relatively small city. So if it has what you want, it could be a neat choice. Uh, it's a nice part of the country, but it is kind of far from a lot of Nicaraguan core things, but it's not terrible. And it's access to some cool places like San Juan del Sur, Granada, and Ometepe is hard to beat. It's really quite central for going to those places. So it could be a decent option for you, but definitely not one that a lot of people are choosing but might as well check it out. And to the best of my knowledge, it is not an expensive city. It's got some decent stuff, but with any of these smaller places, one of the challenges you're gonna run into is that the number of rentals are going to be low. That doesn't mean there will be none, um, but you're going to, and of course, everywhere is going to have some rentals, right? But of rentals that you're interested in as an expat, which it depends on the person we're speaking to. Some people are very happy with Nicaraguan normal houses and don't need any specific amenities for, uh, for expats. And others are going to look at it and say, well, I'm really looking for something a bit more expat-y 
and places like Rivas may be a little bit of a challenge. It just doesn't have the infrastructure for that. Moving up from Rivas, we come to the Departamento of Carrasso, and it has the, tri the triplet cities of Hinotepe, uh, San, Car San Marcos, and Diriamra. These cities, none of them are very big. None of them would you really think of as being cities, and they're known for their university center. So you have a lot of opportunity uh, for uh, student housing, which is going to be very cheap, but probably not going to fit anyone's bill. It's a very safe area, very beautiful area, and if you're looking for upscale, you want to rent a mansion, for example, these are, this area is very good. It's located in an absolutely beautiful, slightly ele elevated area, so you get really nice weather. For Nicaragua, it's a little bit more mild than, say, Managua, uh, but it's a little bit further afield and you don't have a real city. And it's not cold by any stretch. It's just a little bit more mild than Managua. Managua really isn't that bad uh, for those of us who live in like Leon, where it's really hot. Managua is quite pleasant and Carrasso is fantastic. Uh, so it's all perspective, right? But that area will have a little bit of housing it's overall going to be a rental challenge just because they are small towns and they don't really have very many expats. I do know we have some expats on the channel who live there or have family there, and it'd be great to hear what people know of as rentals in the area. I'd be very interested in seeing them if anybody wants to show them to me. Uh, I'd, I'd love to come see what's, what's out there, and I, it's a beautiful area I'd like to go to. It's a nice area for restaurants and stuff. It's very well uh, positioned in the country. It's relatively central to a lot of things. So it's, even though they're small cities and they don't have a ton of amenities on their own, because there's three of them and because it's not very far to get to Managua or Rivas or Granada, you may find that if you have the right transportation, then it might work out just fine for you. But being very safe, it's probably great. I don't know if you're going to find affordable mid-market mid -market apartments, which is generally when people are asking for that here. That's normally what we expect that they're looking for, something that expats are likely going to like on a reasonable budget. If you're really looking to be cheap. I do know people who choose that area because they're able to get housing really, really cheap and of course still live uh, decently well. You can get really cheap in some other places, but you may be living in, in very uh, poor barrios. You may be living with danger or whatever. Uh, there you can live very cheaply and still decently well. So north of there, we run into the capital district. That takes the entire zone just north of there. That's Managua, Messiah, and Granada again. We can go to the east, which means going around the top of Lago Nicaragua, and there are two cities over there, uh, Huigalpa and Boaco. Now these two I find very interesting, and I really want to do a number of shows on them, but I've never been to either. Even though I've been relatively close to both, I've never actually been to either, and they're in a neat mountainous zone. Uh, they are famous for their cattle ranching. Both are supposed to be pretty clean, pretty nice, and decently safe. Like really quite safe. They're generally relatively wealthy cities compared to a lot of Nicaragua because they have a very strong, successful agricultural economy going on in that area. Uh, they tend to be seen as, as pretty good. Now, Boaco is famous for being built in the hills, uh, whereas Huigalpa is known for being built in front of the hills. So a little bit different experience. I can't say too much about them, and I don't have any idea how their rents are going to compare to the rest of the country. That I've never heard about. I know that they are considered to be relatively wealthy cities. They're also very small cities, like quite small. But just because they're wealthy does not mean that their rents are going to be high. Those two things don't often go together, especially in Nicaragua, because the things that tend to drive rents are tourists, and the things that tend to drive wealth is business opportunity. And those two things don't really overlap that much, so you often end up with very affordable places that are actually doing really well economically, and places that may be very poor, maybe loaded with tourists. It just works out that way. And a lot of other countries and, and travel destinations will be similar, but I think here, this is just something you need to know that those things are not connected. So those cities, I've never heard of expats living in either one. They are not popular destinations to even consider for being an expat. Um, and so I think rentals are going to be very hard, even if you're looking at an Airbnb and you're trying to go spend the weekend in Boaco, there is about one place you can possibly rent. Like the, the options are seriously few and far between. So finding not just a, an affordable apartment, but any apartment could be a challenge in those locations. They don't get tourists, they don't get expats, and the people who live there generally have familial homes. So the number of people looking to find any kind of rental is just kind of low, and, and you're going to pay the price possibly just figuratively, maybe actually, uh, in, in that lack of options. So could be a neat area. 
definitely safe, but I don't have any way to know if it would be likely a really affordable option or not. But they're worth mentioning because they are two cities, they're out there, and both uh, could be really good options. And I think we'll make some really interesting episodes when we manage to get out there and film. Now, if we go west, we're going to run into Leon. This is going west of Lago Managua. That is where I'm filming right now. That is where I live. I've chosen to live here. Leon is an extremely affordable city. It is very large. as the second largest uh, city in the country at 300,000 people, which is not a large city. And it feels a lot like a village when you go out here. Uh, you don't get that big city feel feeling. You have a limited number of restaurants. You tend to see people that you know. Uh, so you do get that feeling of living in a large village. Uh, but we do have a lot of amenities other places don't have. We have one of the giant new hospitals being built. We have one of the giant new baseball stadiums being built. So some things we get are on a city scale, but some things like the ease of walking around tend to be a little bit more on a village scale. However, navigating the streets can be quite confusing. So that makes it feel a bit larger for a lot of people when they first move here. Leon is quite safe. That's worth mentioning. That's one of the big draws. It is also very affordable. It's not the cheapest city, but it is on the cheap side of the middle. Uh, and so you tend to get a lot more for your money here. You're certainly going to be cheaper than a Managua, Messiah, or Granada, probably cheaper than the Carrasso cities, right? I would guess we compare to Rivas, but I'm only guessing because I haven't rented in Rivas. Uh, but here specifically, like your money will go far in, in Leon. And because it's a major city, you don't have to worry about lacking in general amenities. We have large uh, box stores. We have the grocery stores. We have uh, shipments of things. You, you have computer stores. Like we have most of the things that you need. Obviously, we still go to Managua. You want a price mark? Got to go to Managua. You want a Burger King? Got to go to Managua. Some of that stuff, yeah, we're still driving in and they're only central. But if anything is going to exist outside of Managua, we will have it here in Leon before anyone else. Um, we have the McDonald's, the Little Caesars, the Pizza Hut, uh, local chains. We have just a number of things. You really can uh, live with Leon being your core city quite well and not have to worry about uh, traveling to Managua in order to stock up on goods for uh, very often, right? It's, it's, it's more occasional than you would find with other cities. So for a lot of people, and this is one of the reasons that we gravitated here, certainly not the reason we chose Leon. We chose Leon because of its beach proximity more than anything else. And while we didn't really love the heat of Leon compared to other places, the, there's a constant breeze, and so it actually feels cooler than some other cities that are actually cooler uh, if you're in a spot where you get that breeze. So that could be a personal thing. Um, but certainly it was a bonus that Leon cost. We, we moved from Granada. We used to live in Granada. We left, and then when we came back, we came back to Leon. And when we lived in Granada, the cost of everything was much more. Now, we definitely got taken advantage on our rent, and it was a different era, but our rent uh, many years ago was easily four times what our rent is now. Our power uh, eight years ago was easily 10 times, 10 times, a thousand percent, literally than what our power is now. And when we were here before, we had two air conditioners in a small house. Only two rooms were air conditioned. Now we're air conditioning like six rooms with more people and running many refrigerators instead of one and doing many computers instead of one. Like we expanded by so much, yet we're paying one tenth, literally. We pay $45 a month. We used to pay 450. Um, so everyone tells us we were getting taken advantage of. At the time, our rent was way too high. So Yes, that's very likely, but even if we hadn't been the, if we got proper prices in Granada, all those things would have been much higher than they are here in Leon. Leon is just very affordable. Also over here in the west of the country, if you go north of Leon, is Chinandega. Chinandega used to be the second city of the Departamento Leon, but Leon was enormous as a Departamento. They split it in half. We're still two of the big ones. Uh, Chinandega is a quite wealthy city and logistics hub, and it sits about 40, 45 minutes north of Leon. It's actually a quite nice city. Driving around the city can be a little bit annoying. In general, I always hear that the rents are very low. However, Chinandega is one of those Departamentos that really doesn't get tourists at all. And so when you go up there, expect to be 
a novelty, right? That can be important. That means that uh, gringo pricing is less likely. That may not seem uh, obvious, but like Granada is gonna give you some of the worst gringo pricing because everybody's used to it. In Chinadega, they're not gonna go out of their way to scam one person. It's not really a scam, but to raise prices for one person. It's not worth it. In Granada, it could be more than half of their audience, so it's very worth it. But in Chinadega, they would have to you know, get over being caught by surprise, determine that you're actually a gringo, take a risk of changing the price for you, and, and it, it just, it, it doesn't have the same value that you get other places. So, uh, Chinandega is, while it's an expensive city, and when you go there, you feel that it's a more expensive city from an economy perspective, it has fancier restaurants, it has fancier shopping areas, it's got uh, a neat sprawl outside the city. The city has a lot of amenities you would expect in a city like Leon's size, but it's about half the size. Uh, and it's got beautiful rotundas and beautiful parks and an aqua park in the middle of the city. That's that's a city park uh, that that's just open to the public and um, it re and it really is a nice city. So that's a consideration. But it is the hottest city in the country. So that alone turns a lot of people off. A lot of people are turned off by the heat in Leon, and it's noticeable, right? If you come from Managua to Leon, Managua is kind of the the middle of the country figuratively and actual in temperature climate perspective. Leon, when, when you come from Managua to Leon, everyone says, you know, Leon is hot, right? And they're right. When you get here to Leon, it is hot. You really notice that it's hotter than Managua. But the same thing, if you go from Leon to Chinandega, people are like, whoa, you, you know it's hot, right? And you're like, yeah, I know. And when you go, you feel the temperature increase, even in that 40 minute drive, mostly all at the end. Like it really does. It's like a wall of heat we found. Uh, and so Chinandega is noticeably hotter than Leon, which is noticeably hotter than Managua, which is a pretty warm city. So, so <laughs> a lot of people are turned off by Leon. Almost everyone is turned off by Chinandega simply on that. Other than that, it is a very approachable city, but Again, rents are difficult, not because they're expensive, because they are few and far between. So expect to be challenged there. And that leaves us with the three cities of the highlands. That's Matagalpa, Esteli, and Hinotega. These cities sit up in the mountains to the northeast of Managua, and they represent a real opportunity for getting better prices and great safety. These are all very nice cities, and they all have quite nice weather, very mild compared to the rest of Nicaragua. So from that perspective, they tend to be very popular, although none of them really get that much tourist traffic, which is surprising because it's such a beautiful region, but it's a little bit farther away, it's up in the mountains, and it doesn't have the famous attractions. They're not colonial cities, they don't have the rum distillery, they don't have the beaches, so they get a little bit less attention, but it's actually a really nice region. Of this, Matagalpa is the largest and probably going to give you the best value. It gives you the most city feeling for sure. It is also very affordable, and it's personally my favorite city in the country. I love the weather, I love the layout of the city, and I like the number of things that there are to do around town. So I really like Matagalpa quite a lot, and it's also the closest of those cities to other things. It's the closest to Leon, the closest to Managua, so if you're going to live there and you want to be able to travel, it's going to give you the best opportunities. For most people, Esteli seems to be the preferred city. I have friends who prefer it, who live there full time, of people who visit uh, and people who decide that they're going to be, you know, moving to the region. Esteli seems to be the one that's chosen a bit more. It is almost as large as Matagalpa. It's a little bit more dense, but it's a smaller area. Uh, it, is quite a nice city. We've done videos on, on all of these cities here on the channel. Uh, I've walked them extensively. They're all very nice. Esteli is just a little bit uh, lower in altitude, a little bit warmer than Matagalpa, but very close. Matagalpa's in the middle, and then Hinotek is the, the top one. All of them are safe. Uh, Esteli is a bit more expensive. So while this one is safe, you may find that rents get a little bit higher in Esteli. So it may get ruled out if you're on a tighter budget. And remember, all these cities are affordable. So you may just find that, that none of it matters, right? For the majority of expats moving to Nicaragua, you can live where you want to live and small adjustments in, in going out to eat or whatever is going to more than make up for your rent differences from the least expensive to the most expensive. But if you're on a very tight budget or this is, you just need to prioritize things in a certain way, Esteli is probably going to lean on the expensive side. It has a bit of a reputation for being quite expensive here in Nicaragua. And then Hino Tega is the northernmost and smallest most of those cities. It is the coldest weather in the country, the coldest overall climate, so that's a big, a big positive for it. 
but surprisingly extremely few expats choose it. It is very isolated. It tends to be far, you know, a longer drive to get to wherever you want to go. Uh, Esteli sits on the Pan American Highway, so it's very easy to get places. Medigalpa is quite a large city, uh, and so it has its own major highway going to it, and it goes right onto the Pan American when you come down from the mountains. Hinotega does not have those advantages. It's on a smaller road, it is farther away, it is more isolated, and it's a smaller city of its own. So if you live there, the number of things you have to do in town is much less. There's much less nightlife, uh, fewer restaurants, less activities, just you're going to have a much more quiet existence. But if you're looking for beautiful climate, if you're looking for uh, extreme cost savings, it is often seen as the cheapest of the larger cities in the country. And while we're talking rent, normally it is worth noting that of all places in the country, Hinotega is likely to be the place where, you'll, where you will use the least electricity because not only do you not need air conditioning really ever, most people don't even buy air conditioning there, but even using fans is something you will often not need. Living in Hinotega really gives you a great climatic experience. And it does have a beautiful lake right there. It has a hydroelectric plant just outside the city. Um, and, uh, and so it, it's potentially a very good choice, uh, very safe and very cheap. Overall, Nicaragua has eight cities that we all consider to be the cities of the country. And I'll do my best to list them off. We just covered them, but let's run through the official list of the big eight. That's Managua, Leon, Granada, Masaya, Rivas, Esteli, Hinotega, Matagalpa, Chinandega. There's actually nine. I don't know how I skipped one in my count, but there's nine cities. These are the major nine. Everything else is very small. A uh, satellite of one of those cities, a suburb of one of those cities. There are lots of other cities in the country. And if you're looking at lists, you're going to see ones like Ocotal that are very interesting. Uh, it's one of the, the old colonial cities. It is a departmental capital, but it's so small that People don't put it in the city list. Uh, uh, Porta Cabeza is absolutely tiny. Now, there are some places in this main list, like Rivas, that's so small it would normally fall off the list, but because of where it sits on the main highway, because it's connected to so many things, it ends up getting the uh, attention of the list, even though uh, it's very, very small. So we have this very short list of what we consider the real cities. If you're going to be living outside of those, you're getting into the adventure category, meaning uh, it's a city so small that there's no tourist infrastructure. There's, you know, renting is going to be completely hit or miss. We can't give you any kinds of predictions. We can't find anyone else who's done it. Um, and you're, you're very much on your own. That doesn't mean that those aren't great opportunities. But when looking at the cities, these are the, the nine that we would dig into and really consider uh, to be important. So at some point, I really want to do a video where we run through all nine and show them all to you. Uh, but right now, we're just talking about answering this question of which one is going to be the most affordable with the greatest degree of safety. Honestly, Hinotega is your clear winner for nothing but those requirements. But from a more general perspective, if you're looking for those, but you're looking for more of the traditional Nicaraguan experience, the warm weather closer to the beach, closer to the tourist, more colonial, then Leon is probably going to be your best choice. Um, Rivas is very reasonable, especially if you really like a little bit more of the expat experience. But all of the cities, including ones we didn't list, will have some way to live affordably with a good degree of safety. So you have lots of choices. Michael, let us know if you have more factors you want to be considered. We may be able to just simply narrow it down to one. I've been told by people, just tell me the coldest city. It's like, it's easy, it's Enotega. You don't have to say anymore. There's no, no requirements, there's no searching. That's the, 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 the coldest. Well, okay, but I want the oldest. All right, it's Granada. We just know the answer, right? But I want a big city. Look, the only big city is Managua. We're not a giant country, so it's really easy to get some basic answers. Once you, once you know which additional factors are really important, it's often easy to just know what city we're going to be looking at. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. Really appreciate everyone who takes the time and, and the effort to do that. It's really meaningful to me, and it helps make all of this possible. I'm having a lot of camera problems today, and it was an incredibly busy day. I'm coming up on midnight, just getting this recorded, going to get this uploaded for you guys as quickly as possible. Hopefully, a little bit more time to work on the show tomorrow. I was out of town twice this week for entire days. It has been absolutely exhausting. So I really appreciate everyone putting up with a different style today. Let, get down in those comments. Let me know what you think of the show today, the audio, the video, the format, the topic. 
ask your questions because that's how we know what to put on the show next time. And uh, yeah, share on social media. Tell your friends, tell your family. Get the word out there. If everyone went out and got one more person to, to subscribe, we would, we would explode overnight. We're doing really well, right? Loving how, how great the channel is doing, but a little bit of growth goes a long way. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.